Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach and this is my little show about whitewater things. And in today's episode, I want to talk about counterbalanced oars again. I've already talked about this once and I shared how much I don't like them, but I've had some really good discussions with a few people and I understand why in some cases, sometimes they might be useful to some people. So what I want to do today is start by explaining why I don't think you should use them, share some thoughts on how you can help avoid using them, and then maybe say, okay, there's some times when some of you might want to use them. So before I get started, please take a second, hit the like button, hit subscribe. It makes me feel cool about myself. I am a very insecure person and you can help me feel secure by subscribing. I really appreciate it. So with that, let's get started. Uh, the big downside of adding counterbalances to oars is you're making them heavier. You're basically making them weigh more. And that's not a really good thing for a few reasons. One, if you carry your oars up and down to your car, you're carrying heavier things, right? That's just more weight you have to carry. So I'm not a big fan of that personally. Also, when you're rowing, you're accelerating and deaccelerating that mass quite a bit. You're, you're, you're moving more, this weight around all the time. And so I'm gonna contend over the course of a day, it takes more energy to move those back and forth than push down on them once in a while. Now I don't have a proof of that. That's just what, how I feel about them. Also, if you get hit with your oar, there's mass in that oar, so you're probably gonna get hit harder right so by adding the mass in the oar you're actually creating the possibility of getting more hurt when you're getting smacked with an oar uh, another one is I, I use my oars a lot of people do to set up their tarps and so if you have a top heavy oar to put there's a little ring a lot of times to go with the handle a top heavy oar is i think more likely to like fall down and when it falls on somebody it's going to hit them harder so again more possibility of injury and finally uh, counterbalanced oars typically sink your oars should probably float. Most oars just float. If they come at detached from your boat for whatever reason, they float. If you put weights in them, they'll probably sink. So having oars that sink is kind of a bummer because that's, you know, it doesn't really follow leave no trace principles and they're expensive. You don't really want to have your oars sink. So I'm not a massive fan of these counterbalanced oars for all of those reasons. And I think people buy counterbalanced oars because their boats are set up incorrectly. And part of the problem is People order a 13 foot boat and say, what length of oars do I need for 13 foot boat? And somebody gives them an answer and that's wrong. And, and oar length should be figured out by measuring the distance between the oar locks. And conventional wisdom says divide by two, multiply by three, which is the same as multiplying by 1.5. I'm gonna say that's a bit short and say, take this distance between the oar locks and multiply by 1.63. What I see people out there in the field rowing in my opinion, almost everybody has oars that are too short. And so what happens is instead of having oars where when you put them, I feel like if you put them down, they should be really close to each other, maybe half an inch, maybe an inch. They should be really close. And when they're up, they should be in like a, a push-up position. So if you have the right length oar, that'll work beautifully. If your oars are too short, they're, li they're like this when they're down low. And, and you don't know they're too short because you've never used the right oar. And what happens is it, you will get worn out more because there's not that much weight of the oar here. And so your thinking is, oh, I'll counterbalance them. And so you have the wrong length oar, they're too far apart, and then you add a counterbalance to overcome that. What I'm gonna say is get the right length oar, start there. And because with the right length oar, there's more oar inside the oar lock. And so the longer, the more oar there is here, the more natural counterbalancing there is. If there's less oar here, there's less natural counterbalancing. When I say natural counterbalancing, I mean counterbalancing from just the oar without adding stuff to it. So I'm gonna suggest having your oars really close down low, and then when they come up, they're further apart. Now people will say, okay, well, you'll hit your thumbs on your, on your oars and hurt yourself. And that is certainly a possibility. It's not impossible to do. What I'm gonna say is learn to row without your thumbs on the end of your handles. Put your thumbs on, like grab, hand, grab your handles like this, not like this, that's step one. And step two is just be careful, be thoughtful about it. It rarely happens, it's a thing that can happen if you row with your thumbs in the end and make a mistake. Uh, the other thing I would say is, you know, if you want even more counterbalancing, considering rowing overlapping oars. And so instead of having them barely touch, they overlap a little bit. And when they overlap a little bit here, they don't overlap up here. And what that'll mean is you're gonna push and on your return stroke, you're gonna bring one back before the other. And actually this is a really effective way to row. You have to kind of learn how to do it, but it's gonna have even more oar on the inside, which is even more counterbalancing. And you get a longer lever arm here and more power, 
right? The more ore there is on the inside of the ore lock, the more of a lever you have. You get more power that way. And so I would say fix your ores first. Don't have your ores like this. Get them in or even consider overlapping to give you more power and more natural counterbalance. I think that's most people's problems. What I see happen a lot is people see this to see this is a small seat. People sit high that then they get longer ore locks that are further apart and then their ores are even farther apart. And so really fix that. And then they overcome that with, with putting weights on the end of the ores. And that's not the problem. Fix the ores first. And so that's not something, this is sitting lower. And so it's not even something like that. It's more like this. Hopefully that made sense. Again, I'm going to say like measure the distance between your ore locks, multiply by 1.63, get that length of ore and then have them, have them almost touch when you're, when you're sitting down. That would be the key. If you multiply by 1.63 and you get some outrageous number that seems just insane, like 12 foot ores or like 11 and a half foot ores for a 13 foot, you have some problem. You have some other problem, like your ore locks are too far apart or there's something else going on that you need to fix, but get your boat fitted first. Now, if you still think you need counterbalanced ores, I'm gonna say, cool, like do it. I'm not gonna stop you, but I think those of you that still think you need counterbalanced ores or still want counterbalanced ores, it's it's partially, like I have heavy arms. I'm a big guy. Like I just I have genetics that make me big and, and so my ores are heavy. So my, I recognize that my hands sitting in ores do provide some counterbalance. If you have lighter arms, um, you don't have that counterbalance that I have. So I have a natural counterbalance built in. My arms push those ores down just by resting on them more than most of you. So if we're in the same boat, I have some counterbalance built into my arms. If you have smaller arms, that is maybe a reason to have some counterbalancing in the end of your ores. I, can, I understand that. And also, if you're doing mostly class two flat water, a little bit of class three, and you're just rowing miles and miles and miles, and what you're lacking is strength, but you have endurance, that makes sense because you don't have the strength to like constantly be like pushing them up and down, but you have the endurance to move the weights back and forth that makes sense. So if you have small arms, which means you're probably also lacking strength, but you, and you have endurance, I can see the case for running, running counterbalanced doors. That makes, that makes some sense to me. Uh, but I'm going to make the claim that if you start with counterbalanced doors, if you want to progress to like class four, maybe class five, that's not the right place for counterbalanced doors. So if your goal is to like, maybe the hardest river you ever do is the rogue, Okay, and you have small arms and you just, you want them and your oars the right length. Yeah, I'm with you. That makes sense. But if you want to do the rogue, but then think about the middle fork of the salmon, which you can do with counterbalanced oars. I just don't see the value of it personally. Or maybe start doing like real class four, like a big water middle fork salmon. I wouldn't want the counterbalanced oars personally. Or like a technical river, like the Tuolumne in California. So I'm going to say if, if your goal is to just do multi-days that are class two, maybe easy three, I can see maybe having counterbalanced doors. If your goal is to be a more difficult whitewater boater and do things where the oars might get thrown around to hit you, I'm gonna urge you to stick away from the counterbalanced doors and, and stay with just regular unweighted oars. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, if you have questions, add them in the comments section below. I'll be happy to add them. If you think I'm an idiot and you're like, man, this guy is talking out of his whatever and counterbalanced oars are the bomb, just tell me, I'm learning from this. Like I. I was 100% against counterbalanced ores, had a couple of great conversations over the past couple of weeks. And I'm like, yeah, no, I, I can see some examples how they're useful. I'd like to learn more. Please educate me. Uh, but if, if you have other thoughts, leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget, I'm a very insecure person. And to make me secure, hit the like button, hit the subscribe. And um, yep, that's it for this episode. See you next time. Thanks.